Okay, um, welcome back to the more Kingston Smith David reviews uh, wander around the world of the current state of UK advertising. Uh, as usual, I'm joined by Jason Stone um, and really delighted that today we have our special guest, James Studholm. Uh, James is chairman of the Blink group of companies amongst various other titles, I'm sure, um, and obviously been around the production scene for a long time. Welcome, James. Um, of late, Jason has been reasonably critical, James, of the state of um, the advertising and creativity produced during the lockdown period. And I wondered if you shared that view and if you do what you would attribute it to. Um, well, I think there's a lag between something like this happening and uh, advertising agencies being able to adapt to actually write, for example, scripts that um, are feasible to do. Um, and the, the, and I think you, you've talked about it before, but the general view, I would have thought if you was a brand, you're a brand, if you haven't actually got something to say, don't say anything. And the, the, the initial uh, effect of this was that there was the spasm of we're here for you advertising, which now seems to have abated. And it feels to us as if the scripts we're starting to receive, receive now reflect the circumstances under which those films might need to be made. Um, that is not to say that it is possible to make those films yet but they're starting to engage with the, with the, the circumstances. You know, there are, and, and you get tripped up. We've got a thing at the moment, for example, which um, more or less all of it we can make work apart from child licenses. You know, there's always going to be something, you know, the insurers get their heads around it, but there's, there's, there's trip ups all over the place. There, and there's another challenge as well, of course, which is um, shooting now, which is theoretically possible, is inevitably going to take I wouldn't necessarily say twice as long to achieve, but certainly at least a third longer. So a two day shoot would have to be a, th a three day shoot in a world where I suspect brands are looking to spend a third less. So I'm not quite sure where the, um, the ambition is gonna come from. So are you seeing a better quality and quantity of board flow now than you were maybe six weeks ago? Well, we, we, as you know, Blink is sort of um, a, a multi-stranded uh, beast. So we, part of the Blink world is, is Blink Inc. And Blink Inc. is an animation studio. And that, uh, first of all, that was overwhelmed with um, inquiries immediately. The vast majority being of a highly flaky nature. You know, it's just agencies going, God, God, what are we going to do? I mean, you know, and then somebody mentioned animation and then they realized that animation is not really the solution to your tactical ad that's got to be on TV in two weeks or whatever. And you haven't really thought through how you're going to adapt your idea and so on. So, forth. so pretty much all of that faded away quite quickly. Then there was a next wave of stuff, which was probably uh, half the kind of budget in terms of the sort of budget area that was probably about half the, the amount that we would be used to for that work um which we figured out how to engage with because obviously it's better that people are doing something and getting yeah. paid um and now actually in the last couple of weeks the, the it's it's in, in the anime i'm just talking about the animation area it's kind of coming back sort of more to normal and you've also got the, I know it's bizarre to be talking about this at the end of May, but you've kind of still got the kind of Christmas effect coming. You know, Christmas is going to happen, and it, it, there's always that hope, isn't there, that, that you know, that's going to save you, you know, yeah. from a marketing point of view. Um, so we're starting to see, um, bizarrely, we're starting to see a few Christmas scripts, and they do have some ambition about them. And presumably the presumption that in a couple of months, two or three months, the conditions under which they may be shot will ease mm. do you think that's i mean there's, there's a couple of uh, questions that raises for me i mean the obvious uh question is that um or the obvious point to make is that you are much more aware and conscious of what is and isn't possible than agencies are so are they involving you at the point when they're considering what scripts they should write are they consulting with you about what is and isn't possible 
uh, a bit. Uh, I wouldn't have said super in depth. Uh, no. And the other effect that's happening at the moment is, um, a, a, I mean, it seems to me like this is a period of where five years worth of change that was going to gradually evolve and, and play out has, has been concertinaed into three months. So it feels like there's a lot of um, disturbance in the force, as it were. And uh, one of the things is that agencies, it's accelerating their drive to in-house as much work as they possibly can. Um, so I guess they are trying to figure it out. It, but internally and not really with much reference to us. But what we've noticed, interestingly, is the corollary of that effect is that, that we're, we're seeing and doing a lot of client work. And that's not because we've necessarily been driving towards it. It's just starting to drive towards us. The, I mean, the, coming back to what you were saying before about the, um, the emergence of Christmas scripts now, uh, are those when you say that those are more ambitious are they therefore being written on the basis that there has to be a substantial change between now and the moment when they might be filmed in order to go ahead with them if they are doing that are they at least ensuring themselves by writing a kind of alternative script uh, in case the situation doesn't change as much as they're hoping yeah i think that's right that 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 they are the presumption is that they will be able to do, you know, something a bit all singing, all dancing. Um, and then there is the sort of, but if we couldn't do it that way, what would it be like if we did it in animation or we did some kind of hybrid? I mean, there, 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 there's much more active engagement in that and a, an appreciation of the realities of that. Um, and I understand that there are some, you know, there are, there are actually some pretty big scale, scale scripts um, now where the client is very conscious and being made conscious early on of the, the ramifications of, of what happens if things change and then suddenly change back, you know, your, your all systems go and then suddenly there's a, there's a second wave, you know, what does that look like? Well, that's the thing, James, that's the thing that strikes me more than anything else is um, that the, the ingeniousness which advertising, the advertising industry likes to associate itself with uh, is, is exactly what's required here. You know, the, the creative thing to do is to, is to write the script which can be made under any conditions and also at the same time then factors in the possibility that the mood of the country come Christmas will be one of, of still feeling quite contained. Uh, and in the sense that, that the ideas they come up with not only suit what's possible from a production perspective, but also suit what mood the country will be in come Christmas as well. It, it, it I agree. I, I think that's... Yeah, go on. Yeah, I think that's a huge concern. I mean, if you're a brand, what are you saying? What's your tone of voice? Um, are you basically, as is proved, are you effectively working through a process that you arrive at the exact same conclusions as all the other brands who then generate the work that is essentially indistinguishable one thing from another mm -hmm. um and which seems to be kind of a very high risk actually you know because you're and i i also think there is a problem with the fund of doable the type of scripts that are doable under these circumstances are considerably is a considerably reduced palette shall we say yeah um, there is and i isn't that you know i mean i know i mean obviously from the perspective of a production company like blink who to a certain extent are going you know the landmark uh the landmark work for you over the course of a normal year are the big jobs you know which involve a lot of money yeah. and great you know effectively spectacular but that's not where we are and i think what i find odd is i don't think we will be no you know but we, we everyone has to i don't look it is, this isn't a criticism of production side at all. Uh, my criticisms really are aimed at client side and agency side, who, who I think have been very, very slow to respond to new market conditions. And what frustrates mm. me is that this is, you know, 
Everybody spends a lot of time at awards dues each year congratulating themselves on how clever they are. At this moment, when they've got a genuine opportunity to show everyone how clever they are, they're just floundering around, peeking over each other's shoulders and making the same ad over and over again. Uh, and it's, it's dispiriting, to be honest. And obviously, you can only work but I don't on that. your way. Yeah. But surely there is a way of constructing work that, that uh, I mean, a, a bit like uh, Dominic Cummings and Boris Johnson on Sunday, sometimes you have to sit down with a, a piece of paper that's got a series of dots on it and construct a narrative that works around uh, the sort of known difficulties. And uh, what they came up with on Sunday was probably more creative than any advertising script that uh, has been written in the last three months. I'm glad we got a Dominic Cummings <laughs> reference into this conversation. We would have been lost without I, it. Thank you. I think, Jason, I think the, cr the crisis is, is upstream of that. I think that actually if, you, if you've got a singularity of purpose, if you know what you are trying to say and, and that that is unshakable, that's a, a, some, uh, that is, is not to do with the crisis that's unfolding. That's to do with uh, you know what your what so you know some kind of underlying central truth about your brand you can adapt endlessly um i think the problem is that i i suspect it's upstream essentially in the advertising sense of, of of even the agencies where so the agencies are struggling to respond to their clients crisis of mm -hmm. exactly what should we be saying who should we be saying it to um so for example to your point you might get to Christmas and people would view an enormous all singing, all dancing, glossy Christmas ad as an absolute affront. Um, alternatively, they might view it as the most marvelous thing ever because it's going to cheer everybody up. How can we possibly know? And that stuff has to be, is, 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 was being written, generally being written even before the crisis began and certainly is now being sort of refracted through the lens of where we are right now. Yes, um, I you think know, I, I've, got we'll be honest, be the same. I've got to be honest with you, James, though, I think, I think you're being overly generous. I think it's for them to shape the public's response with the answers that they come up with. That's what, that's what advertising does at its best. It doesn't anticipate. You can't second guess the public mood, not, not to that extent. What you have to do is you have to create something that, that, that works regardless of those circumstances. Uh, and, and that that to me is true creativity and as for the as what you said about being upstream you're right of course but again it's for them to shape it's for them to say to to, to come, go to their clients at this moment and say we know what you should do and i, I perhaps perhaps i'm being really unfair and agencies are attempting that conversation but i think they're waiting it feels like they're sitting and waiting for instructions to come from, from clients so rather doesn't, than doesn't they, that I think that's really interesting, but doesn't it reflect a couple of things, which is the fundamental change, first of all, in terms of uh, trust of uh, advertising agencies, their overweening reliance on research of all sorts, and effectively, the, 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 there are no, you know, back in the day, you mm. had these kind of big intuitive beasts who worked in advertising. They then used research to uh, back up their intuition, but fundamentally, they were they were operating on a kind of, you know, they sensed what was going on. It feels to me as if that is now as rare as rocking horse shit. I can't think of really anybody left in, in the wider ad advertising landscape who could walk into, uh, you know, their, their, their client and shape, you know, walk out with a kind of, you know, a, a, a vision of, of where the, the, the client was, was gonna go yeah. Um, and the client fundamentally would have bought into that. You know, they, it would then the require... Moment. This is the moment for all the wannabe Don Drapers to go ahead and do that. I mean, you know, this, is, this is the moment when everything has to be streamlined if anything good is to be made at all. You can't, you can't rely on uh, sort of research and everything. Everyone's just going to have... You know, the word... I've said this before, I've said it, I'm tired of saying this. The word that everybody likes to associate themselves in this business is brave. Well... Now's your chance. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you think you're brave, go be brave. Make make something mm -hmm. 
which takes a risk in terms of, yes, you're right, we don't, we're not going to know for sure how it's going to land. But the one thing we do know, the three of us, from our experience of watching this business over the years, is that when something's really good, it always lands well. So, you know, sort of to state the bleeding obvious, go and make something that's really good. James, you've, you've been yeah. around a, a while, it would be fair to say, and you've probably seen a few seismic events. Oh, yeah. so how does this one feel the same or different from previous ones? Um, it, well, it feels really incredibly different in that um, I've not lived through, I've lived, I've, Blink's been through three recessions to this point and got pretty close sometimes yeah. in, the early, in the early days. But um, this is the first occasion when literally our business fell off a cliff, essentially in March. Every, everything within Blink, the, the live action part of the company, was yeah. either um, postponed, cancelled, stopped. It just literally that it just turned down to zero. And now we're you know where where the biggest thing that we shot in a month was a 10 grand music video where the director was trying to direct an artist from a van in the street having sort of effectively posted the camera through the letterbox <laughs> type of thing um <laughs> yeah, it was not. maybe i could have a go at that yeah i i don't see why not I yeah don't see why not so that that's that is unique um but I think what it's effectively doing is it's, uh, it's accelerating a trend that's been going on for a long time, which is that production companies need to be leaner, meaner, lighter. They have to effectively, that type of production company, operate from the, the metaphorical um, kitchen table. Yes. And, you know, I don't think these big, I don't think we'll be flying big crews and lots of people around the world doing any, I, and I, I don't think there's going to be a, an, an appetite for any of that. And, and I also think this thing's going to be with us for a long time. It's not like we're going to get to November and, you know, the, the makeup lady is, is no longer obliged to wear the, the PPE, you know. Has your, be... has your barometer of um, positivity or negativity moved? We talk reasonably, reasonably, and it seems to me that generally there's a shift going on between people in the first couple of weeks were incredibly negative and maybe now there's a bit more positivity out there are you feeling that uh well i certainly feel a bit more positive than i felt in that first month and then because in the in that first month i thought this thing was a a, 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 a existential cataclysm uh i think this is really going to be tough to navigate and I think it's going to go on for a lot longer. I think there are, I think initially people were kind of going, oh God, if I can survive these first three months, I think the crunch points for production companies are going to come in, uh, in the autumn. There's, there's going to be an autumn one and there's going to be one next March where everybody's VAT that has been deferred is called in. Landlords are then starting to, you know, have to be paid rent uh, and indeed, in a lot of cases, back rent. So, you know, so the idea that everybody's businesses will have recovered uh, to a point, having effectively probably lost anything like up to the lion's share of five or six months worth of business, um, I just don't know how that's going to play out. I've got to be honest with you. I, I, I can't see around that corner. Well, I, I thank you for your wisdom. It's great to see you as always, Jason. Uh, to summarise, I think we're still in challenging times, but maybe there is a little glimmer of light at the end of a tunnel somewhere. And maybe, Jason, that will give you a creative ad in the near future.